Getting interviewed in a canoe is pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool, yeah. isn't it? Till I hit a rock and you go straight over. Now. Oh! <laughs> I never even saw that. I was going <laughs> Oh, that's not the laughing matter. Canyons here on the Wallen Scenic Stretch of the Rio Grande and the Big Bend. They're extremely special. They're, each, each canyon has its own characteristic. Each has its own space, its own world. Uh, you know, we have sheer canyons, we have wide canyons, gorgeous. We have canyons that only run for a couple miles and others that go for tens on tens of miles. And the space, that's between them, not just the walls, but between the canyons is special too. You know, it's not just about running th through the canyons, it's about every inch and every mile of the river. Um, yeah, they're incredible. Well, one of the wonderful things is being on a river like this on the 50th anniversary of the Wild and Scenic River Act. I mean, my uh, father was the one who created it. Stuart Udall, Secretary of Interior from 1961 to 1969. What built up the passage of the Wild and Scenic Rivers Act was there was a lot going on wrong. And I remember there was a, uh, there was a river in Ohio the Cuyahoga River, because it had so much pollution, it caught on fire. And people are saying, whoa, that's where we get our water. So this is outrageous. We don't want this to happen. There's no way this should be happening. I have some old canoeing handbooks of, you know, fun places to paddle. And back then, Sometimes they would write the descriptions of rivers and they would tell you which sewage outfalls to stay away from. You know, don't paddle the next five miles because it's unbelievably contaminated. Explosions rocked the canyon almost daily for two years before actual placing of concrete in the dam began. We have over 80,000 dams in the United States. You know, a lot of rivers have seen a lot of development. These days, the, the problems that rivers face um, may not be as kind of in your face as a giant new dam. So the problems are often can be more subtle, from development on their shores to water withdrawals taking more water out than the river can deal with ecologically. So the Wild Scenic River Act, it basically says in very clear terms, we're going to protect this river from, from this point onward. You know, the Wild Scenic Rivers Act is a really unique and awesome because it is a proactive law. You know, as things get drier and population booms, the first thing that water managers do is look to our rivers for a new place to dam, a new place to divert, and if you protect miles of the river under the Lansing River Act, it prevents that. It makes it basically off limits for those dams and diversions, which is, um, it's a nice thing to have so that you don't end up in a situation where you're defending, because defending is, is kind of too late. It protects those crown jewels, those places you should never touch. Wild and scenic rivers aren't just in the West. This is a spectacular example of a Western river, but wild and scenic rivers flow through our backyards. I was born in New Jersey, and New Jersey has more wild and scenic rivers right now than Montana. The smart thing about the law that, that Tom's father got adopted is it's not just wild rivers, 
It's scenic rivers, it's recreationally oriented rivers, so it's all different kinds of rivers for all different kinds of people. And one of the most powerful things I think about a wild and scenic designation is it spurs the creation of a locally developed management plan for the river. There you have ranching and you have steelhead fishing and rafting and all these things can coexist because people have gotten together and they're talking to each other. If a kid that's from the city that doesn't necessarily have the means to get over here can have a wanting designation you know, in his backyard, that's so powerful. Kids is the best reaction because they, a lot of times, they don't want to be out here. And then you get them out, and, and it's usually around lunchtime that first day when you've been on the river for a little bit and see that glow and see that appreciation start to grow in their mind. You see them really realize that they're free. I mean, even for adults, you know, it's such a, a fun thing to do. We've got nearly three million miles of rivers in this country, and we've protected about a little less than 13,000 miles as wild and scenic rivers. And while that's great that we've protected that many, it's just a fraction. And there's a lot of places that have great wild rivers that are still in need of protection. We've got to work hard and elect more people to Congress who will be willing to reach across the aisle. Water and rivers are an essential part of our life, and if we don't preserve them, we're gonna be doing an infinite amount of damage to future generations. Yeah.